Welcome to Let's Talk. Here we will focus on the hustle, the juggle, and everyday struggle of small business. We will be here every week talking to small business owners about their everyday struggles, stresses, and ways they have been able to overcome the challenges of running their business. We welcome questions and comments, so please feel free to email us at admin at plemonscpa.com. We hope you enjoy, and above all, we hope it helps. Welcome to the Hustle, Juggle, and Struggle of Small Business. I am Thalia Williams, your hostess. Today we have in our studio Mr. Charles Johnson of the South Central Texas Regional Certification Agency. Welcome, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Good to be here this morning. Excellent. Well, give us an idea of you and what the agency you represent. What does it do? Sure. Uh, again, thank you for this invite. Uh, it's always an op- a great opportunity to be able to talk about myself as well as the South Central Texas Regional Certification Agency. As you mentioned, my name is Charles Johnson. I am the executive director of the South Central Texas Regional Certification Agency. As you guys know, that is a, a tongue-tied deal, as you say it too much, but we're also known as the SETRCA. I am a native of Atlanta, and I've uh, been actually at the agency now uh, for the last four years, uh, but I've been no stranger to this agency. I've been a part of it since 2003, uh, coming in as a marketing uh, director to uh, bring in revenue to the agency. Uh, now I am um, the executive director uh, as we've moved the needle forward, and the agency is a 501c3, and uh, our main and primary goal is to certify small minority women veteran-owned businesses. We do have two parts uh, to our program, a local program, which is uh, caters to the small minority women veteran owned piece. And then we also have a federal program that is your DBE, ACDBE, which is your disadvantaged uh, business enterprise and the airport concessionaire. So the difference between the two is, is the local, we have a little bit more flexibility and and what we look for. And we'll talk about how that plays in with some of our, what we call our member entities, which are your quasi-governmental entities. And then the DBE, ACDBE is more structured in the in the space of federal, uh, those who are looking to do work with uh, TxDOT, uh, the airport, uh, those kind of things. Mm, so interesting. that kind of sums up uh, just a little bit of, about what we do um, in the space of certification. Wow. So your the purpose is to give a uh, advantage to small minority women owned veteran owned businesses to assist them in obtaining contracts. That is correct. So what you have is as many of these quasi uh, governmental entities and the federal side they have goals. And on those goals they may require from a 20%, 25%, 40% goal of what we call SWIMBY, which is Small Minority Women Veteran Owned, and they and with those goals, they have to uh, meet them, and so they will solicit to those individuals who are certified to uh, be a part of a contract. So you'll have your prime contractor will look for subs, and those subs will carry that 20%, 25%, uh, whatever the goal is on those projects. So it's imperative that uh, businesses uh, seek certification because it will give them an extended arm to already to what they're currently doing. So it doesn't hinder anything that they've been doing for the last 10, 20 years. It only is an enhancement. Nice, nice. So the opportunity exists for anyone who's in business to get this certification, correct? That is correct. And, um, you know, one of the things we've seen with the uh, COVID-19, we are now uh, 100% online. So uh, for the last 20 years, we've been dealing with paper. And so now we've graduated to the online space. And so this has uh, really have increased our numbers uh, as it relates to uh, um, new businesses becoming a part of the agency. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Um, we service uh, 14 different counties uh, locally. So... Uh, that's another, you know, piece that, you know, we like. And then also the one of the big caveats with certification is it's free, you mm-hmm. know, to vendors. Uh, we get asked that question quite often uh, because there are a lot of different certifications that are out there. Uh, but if you're within the one of the 16 counties that we service, then those services are free to you. 
Nice. So I'm sure that helps some of the businesses bottom line to know that they don't have an extra cost to be certified. So it's a simple online application. It is. uh, And it depends on who's looking at the application. When you say simple, Uh, we like to think that it is. Uh, I think the biggest piece uh, hurdle that is time consuming uh, because it's documents that you have to gather. Uh, but it's just like if you were purchased a car, purchased a home before, it's kind of in that same space. Uh, we try to make it as easy as possible. Number one, being online, that you don't have to leave the comfort of your home. Uh, then the other piece is, is that, um, you know, we have a support uh, staff that is there to help you to kind of guide you along because we know this is a new space for a lot of uh, companies and they've heard certification. And, yeah, someone told me about it, but I never really acted upon it. Uh, so we're there to assist them any way that we can to get their applications through. That's nice. So what is the turnaround for the processing of the application? Sure. Good question. Uh, turnaround can vary. Um, one of the things with our member entities uh, and the corporate sponsors, they have a uh, priority uh, benefit. So if it's a particular vendor that they're seeking to use on a project that's currently not certified, they could use that priority request. And so we're looking between five to 10 days to have that vendor uh, turned around to be certified if they meet the eligibility. But your average um, turnaround time, you're probably looking between three to four weeks. Three to four weeks. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad. So give us an example of a priority that may come across your table. Sure. So take, for instance, there is, um, you know, a project, a city sidewalk that they, you know, uh, the city says, hey, we want to we want to put this out. Uh, And then we have a company, Acme, that's already certified, has maybe done work with the city before, uh, but never have been certified. Well, the city says, well, we're going to put goals on this particular project, the solicitation. Then they say, well, hey, uh, Charles, we've been using Acme Inc. for a while. Uh, We've encouraged them to go get certified. And uh, then they come in and they will send a priority form to our office. And then from there, uh, the staff will take it and turn it uh, as fast as possible to get them certified. Nice. So it it does help to understand the processes of solicitation as well as understanding how certification can be beneficial to that particular client. In that particular scenario, if that client has never been, ACME has never been certified, now all of a sudden they see the need for it. Getting into your offices should be relatively easy to get in and get certified, especially if they're doing it online. That's key. But what if, you know, they don't have any um, opportunities yet and they're just trying to test the water, so to speak? How long is the certification good for? How long does it last? Sure. And uh, another good question. Uh, The certification uh, on the local side, it is a two year. Uh, renewal process. So every two years, we'll reach out to a vendor, our vendors, and uh, we will you know, send reminders from a 60-day to a 30-day. And uh, they will just you know, submit minimal amount of paperwork to get them recertified. So they don't have to go through the whole process again. And then from the federal side, it's annually. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's just the requirements from the, the federal government for that particular program. So it's not terribly bad uh, for them to you know, have to um, submit that new documentation to get their, their firms to be renewed. Uh, but you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty seamless. And then if you're a new startup, uh, we, we do handle new startups. So you don't have to worry about you being in business for a certain amount of time in order to qualify, uh, for certification. Okay. Does this certification assist with private sector or is it just the public sector government, um, and federal? It is the government and the public sector and the federal. However, um, we do work with some private uh, corporations that do uh, accept the certification. Um, And that's one of the things I would tell many vendors uh, and businesses to look and see what your business model is, because your business model is going to kind of dictate you know, where you want to travel. So they, there are uh, agencies uh, such as ours that handle more of the private sector certifications, such as uh, with uh, the Minority Business Council with Toyota. They will look at that certification more than they will look at our uh, local certification Mm -hmm. uh, because we play in two different fields. So that's probably the biggest piece is uh, for a business uh, when they hear certification is to really look at to see, you know, what field you want to play in. I suggest as a business owner myself, play in all of them. (laughs) Mm, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Playing safe. all of them. Be, Be safe. safe. So get your local, get your private, get your state, your federal, get it all. We have Chris Hall joining us today from Pontum Financial. Chris, tell us a little bit about Checkpoint Charlie's. Checkpoint Charlie's is one of my favorite topics. First, I have to pay, give credit where credit is due. My golf pro uh, gave me a lot of Checkpoint Charlie's. Everything he referenced was a small task or a small little box to check every time I lined up with the ball. But Checkpoint Charlie's referred to a sy- systematic breakdown of tasks that you can address that almost become like clockwork. So you know what you're doing. You know when you have to do it. So all you have to do is implement that and do it and make sure that ch- the checks are done on a regular basis. So if you can check off one, you can move the two, check off two, move to three. And what it's in direct reference to as far as business owners go is I always say, look, we have checkpoint Charlie's that we need to make sure are taken care of on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually. So at least one of those meetings, several of the team members from the Power Five need to be in that meeting so they can update you on those checkpoint Charlie's because they have their own list. But as a business owner, you should be able to sit down with a one page of your Checkpoint Charlies provided to you by the people who are collaborating together, mainly the Power Five, and be able to say, these are the decisions you have to make as a business owner, and then be able to file it away in your corporate book and move on for the year. So how can we reach you to learn more about the Power Five? One of the best ways to reach us is to just give us a phone call. It's 210-625-4845. You can follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook. Or visit our website at pontumfinancial.com. That's P-O-N-T-E-M financial.com. Chris Hall is a partner with Pontum Financial and offers securities and investment products and services through Waddell and Reed Inc. W-R-I member FINRA slash S-I-P-C. Pontum Financial is a separate entity from W-R-I. Now, do you deal with hub certification, historically underutilized business? Because I know from past experience, that's been one of the certifications that a lot of people ask about because they hear it, you know, historically underutilized business. And what exactly does that mean? Sure. Uh, Good question. Uh, We do have a process where we have a uh, MOA with the state. And MOA? An MOA is a memorandum of agreement. Okay. Okay. And that just says that we are authorized if they come through our program for the small business side that we will we do an extraction every month of those newly certified vendors and we send those to the state of Texas, which is in Austin. And they will look through to ensure that they meet the eligibility from the state standpoint by plugging in the EIN uh, number and if there's no irregularities, then they will will give a, a check mark and approval. Uh, typically, it's about ninety nine percent approval. Every now and then, we have that one percent that just doesn't make it with the state. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't know why. That's that's in their uh, wheelhouse. Uh, but then, if you do, the state will then issue a uh, certificate uh, to that vendor mm-hmm. directly. Mm-hmm. So it will not come from our office, but. What you don't have to do is start over and do our certification and do a hub, which hub, the historically underutilized business, is all state uh, contracts. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times vendors, they, they miss that piece. Um, they can check it on our, on the application, but they, they miss that piece uh, when it comes to uh, doing work with the state. The state has a lot of uh, procurement opportunities. So I would suggest that you know individuals don't look at just the governmental side, look at the state side. Mm, and we know that any RFP process is quite challenging, quite challenging. Do but, we have to have that discussion? <laughs> <laughs> Not at this time. We'll come back to that later. But we understand that process is quite challenging. Yes. And we know the certifications do assist. Even if they're going to be a prime contractor, those certif- certifications can assist them in getting that particular contract. That is that's correct, and uh, that's been one of the Achilles' heel for a lot of small businesses that when they play into this um, governmental side, the RFPs. Um, unlike the private sector, sometime in the private sector, and I'm you know guilty of it. I've been able to just do a one sheeter, write it out uh, with a pen and paper, and hand that over and shake a hand, and the contract is let. Uh, however, on the quasi-governmental and the uh, federal side, it's a little bit more cumbersome. A and little bit? 
a little bit. Okay, we'll I'll use be that conservative. loosely. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but that's the that's the crux of where I think uh, some more work can be done. Um, unfortunately, we're not set up to to do that as an agency because we stick to the primary focus. But there are a lot of other uh, resources here in the city that will help small businesses uh, complete RFPs and how to submit those. Right. And an RFP for our audience is request for proposal. That is correct. And then we have the RFQs request for quotes. quotes. So there is definitely a process, but there's business out there. For entities who are certified, the playing field is level once they get certified. They have the ability at that point to play on all levels. A lot of it depends on their capacity to handle the work because I've found that small businesses are usually one, maybe two people. And the difficulty in being a solopreneur versus a C-Corp or S-Corp can make the difference in whether or not you bid for something, whether or not you get something, as well as past history. That makes a big difference as well. Sure. So I think the challenge is getting those businesses who want to play in the quasi-government field mm-hmm. to get certified, to assist them in that endeavor. And sometimes they find out just the certification looks good on the resume. Sure. And um, and, and I'm glad you spoke on that because – what happens is, you know, of course, there's not enough work to go around for every, you know, eligible vendor. And then uh, many sometimes just use it as a, a vetting system uh, for leverage to kind of say, hey, pour my pour my company through the filter. And if I check out, then that just gives the leverage and says, hey, I'm qualified as a business, uh, according to the South Central Texas Regional Certification Agency. Uh, then you do have that other group that says, hey, I want to be a player and I want to expand and I want to grow and scale my business. Well, that's where the certification can provide those additional um, uh, revenues uh, and then also uh, build your resume uh, by projects that you reward it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the main thing is is to get out there. And one of the suggestions that I would say to many businesses, if you do bid and you do not win uh, and not select it as an award, uh, continue to keep bidding um, because the RFPs will still keep coming. Uh, and then also the main piece is have a debrief mm-hmm. with many of the uh, uh, these opportunities that, that have been forwarded to you. Uh, if you should not win, uh, at least get an idea of why you didn't win. Uh, because that will help you uh, as you put your next uh, bid solicitation, your RFP, together. Agreed, agreed. So how can someone reach you? How can someone reach you directly or either your agency? Sure. Um, Our agency, we're located at 3201 Cherry Ridge Street. Uh, We're in building B as in Bob, uh, Suite 210, and that's here in San Antonio, 78230. Or you can visit our website at www.s as in Sam, C as in Charlie, T is in Tom, R is in Russ, C is in Charlie, A is in Apple.org, which short is uh, SCTRCA.org. Excellent. And our phone number is 210-227-4722 in general. And to meet, reach me directly, uh, my extension is 304. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Charles Johnson, for being on our show today. Hopefully our audience will be able to take advantage of the information that you've given them and they'll reach out to you because I know being a city of San Antonio resident, this ecosystem of support has not been fully shown to the audience, to the public like it needs to be. And our goal is to highlight the agencies that are here in San Antonio to support those small business owners because that's what we're here to do to help with their hustle, juggle, and struggle a small business. So once again, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. For more information about any of our guests or if you have questions and comments, please email us at admin at plemonscpa.com and don't forget to check out our website, plemonscpa.com for upcoming events and workshops in San Antonio. David B. Plemons CPA Inc. is providing this podcast as a public service, but it is neither a legal interpretation nor a statement of David B. Plemons CPA Inc. policy. Reference to any specific product or entity does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by David B. Plemons CPA Inc. The views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the Hustle, Juggle, and Struggle of Small Business podcast does not imply an endorsement of them or their concepts or any entity they represent. Views and opinions expressed by David B. Plemons CPA Inc. employees are those of the employees and do not necessarily reflect the views of David B. Plemons CPA Inc. or any of its officials.
You should always consult your own investment advisors, attorneys, and accountants before making any decisions concerning your financial matters. If you have any questions about this disclaimer, please contact our office.